Hello, Tom Levecchia here with the latest edition of the New Theory Podcast. I am exceptionally excited about today's guest, Dan Henry, who had the pleasure of coming across his podcast and reached out, said, want you on the show. And what's happening, I believe, is I'm like an old school sales guy. I still send emails. I don't use a salesforce.com. I use a spreadsheet, if anything, a lot of my gut. And although I'm pretty good at sales, I am terrible at the process and execution. What I learned of Dan is he is the expert. He keeps me engaged and he sends some really relevant content. So I asked Dan to come on. He's got a book. He's got a podcast. We're going to go through all that. Dan Henry, welcome to the New Theory Podcast. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. How are you doing? I'm doing well. So give us a little bit of a background and tell us what makes you, you. Uh, well, uh, I you know, spent a large portion of my life working for other people. I was a, uh, a pizza boy for oh, wow. about seven years. I know that seems cliche, but uh, back then it wasn't. <laughs> yeah. uh, and, uh, you know, I, um, I always wanted to start my own company. So I decided to learn a lot about digital marketing and I ended up starting an agency. I got pretty some pretty uh, decent footing there, created a six figure agency. And then down the line, I started doing coaching and consulting and online courses, um, learned how to do that really well, uh, ended up hitting, going from zero to a million dollars in my company in about five months. Wow. And I just kept, kept going. And uh, to date, we've done over 20 million. Um, and that's primarily selling uh, you know, our, con our, our consulting program, uh, as well as a mastermind. Um, I ended up writing a uh, Wall Street Journal and USA Today bestselling book on the subject called Digital Millionaire Secrets. Oh, wow. um, and that has helped, you know, get us quite a few clients. But ultimately, uh, what we do is a bit different than most. We, you know, we believe that when you have a business, regardless of what that business is, whether it is selling online courses, whether it's selling coaching, whether it's selling accounting services or a done for you service like web design or, yeah. or um, advertising or marketing, whatever it is, that it's better to charge more and create a red carpet experience for your client, sell it at a higher price yeah. um, and attract those clients on autopilot through uh, a system we call core content that basically qualifies your prospect. So when you get on the phone with them, they're super qualified, they're willing to pay a high price. And, you know, high ticket clients are a lot easier to work with and a lot easier to sell to than low ticket clients. So one thing we help people do is, you know, if you charge $500 for your services, we help you add a zero, yeah. um, basically raise your prices and still outsell your competition. So that that's a, a quick nutshell of, uh, you know, uh, uh, my, my story. Love it. Okay. So first I want to start off in the digital marketing agencies. So I have an agency, a small agency, and you obviously grew it quickly. You grew it well. What were your core services, SEO, PPC websites? What was your core service there when you started? Uh, at that time it was like Facebook ads and funnels. So okay. the niche I was in was real estate, uh, one of my clients was a high rise condominium and they needed to sell out. Uh, it was these micro condominiums. They needed to sell them out uh, before the building was, was actually built. And yeah. so I created a marketing Facebook ads and funnel around that, um, that helped them sell, you know, get appointments to sell out that condo. And now I don't, you know, I don't do that anymore. I haven't done, yeah. done you in, in a while. Yeah. So, um, I mainly stick with consulting now, but uh, that was the agency. So it was Facebook ads and, and funnels, basically getting people clients, which is, you know, sort of what I've always done my whole career. I've been very good at get, getting clients, which is why yeah. the name of my company is Get Clients. Get clients. There yeah. you go. Okay, that makes sense. So, so but what I'm interested in is, so, so you get to the point where the agency is doing well, right? Mm -hmm. Do you exit and sell it, keep it on autopilot? Do you sell into those same clients for your new service? I want to get a feel of your migration because you're at a really good point right now, but I want, I want to get there. So, so, so what did you do with your agency? And then talk us about what you did next. 
so I just, my whole life, I've loved teaching. Yeah. I was a martial arts instructor. Um, I, I just have a knack for teaching. And so I could have sold it and, and started an info business, but I just decided to focus and I just converted. I just stopped accepting new clients. Uh, I converted over to consulting and I created an online course around it. Uh, because, you know, for me, I'd rather serve 5,000 people and, and, and help them yeah. through a, like a course or, you know, a, a consulting program than five, like than five people who yeah. are clients, yeah. you know? Uh, and, and that sort of changed over, over time because I used to sell to the masses where we would sell hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of copies of an online course. Uh, and now I've switched to a higher end coaching and consulting model where we sell to less people, but we give them far more attention, get them a far uh, a more hands-on approach. And I've, I've, my footing has landed there, but I know right. I did not sell the agency. I just converted it to more of a, you know, instead of done for you, it was done with you, with you yeah, uh, or, or consulting. So, okay. so that makes sense, right? Process. That makes sense. So if I, if I fully appreciate the migration, it's a um, agency B product and the consulting service. And then C is the product and the consulting higher end coaching, helping people. Do you, do you, um, do you have, especially in certain vertical or are you agnostic on, on the vertical for your consulting? Well, I personally like, uh, to have a consulting program and a mastermind. Okay. Um, here's the thing I've learned though, is that you, the way, and th this is, this is where people get mixed up. The way in which you sell it is the same. Yeah. Like I, I've developed a way to sell things. Yeah. And it doesn't matter if it's a course, a coaching program, a done for you service, an event, a mastermind, a software. Um, it, it real that has really no relevance whatsoever. And if you think it does, you probably need a lot of education when it comes to marketing. Uh, but the truth is, regardless of what I've done over the years, I've always sold it the same way, and right. I've improved that way. But that way has remained. Uh, uh, at its core the same. And so that's what I've helped other people do, regardless of what business they're in. I've helped them sort of use the system that I've, I've created over, over time. The only thing I don't do or I don't help people with is selling like, you know, fidget spinners or something like that. <laughs> so it has to be like a transformational product. Yes. Yeah, and you're at a good point where you could pick and choose who you work with. Um, what's the toughest no you had to say to? What's the toughest turn down or no um, to a client that you had to say? Uh, you don't so, give specifics, but what, what so to be to be quite honest with you, I like saying no. Sometimes it 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 entertains me more than saying yes. Um, yeah. I'm very because you know we have two programs. One is where you work with my team, and one is where you work with me. So I'm pretty picky on the second one. Yeah. Um, and if I get on the phone with you and I find that you're going to be, you know, a pain. Yeah. and you're not coachable, I just say no, because yeah. here's the deal. Imagine if you signed on uh, a client and you know from the beginning that client is going to be a pain. Yeah. The amount of work you're going to have to do is so much more than just finding another client that's a, a good fit. Correct. And the other thing is, and I protect this with my life, my reputation, and look, I'll be, let, let's be honest in my career. I've tried some pretty crazy stuff. I've, yeah. I've come out with some ads that some landed great and they were hilarious and you know, some didn't quite land and they offended a lot of people. And so yeah. in, in my career, you would think that um, with that, maybe my reputation could have been tarnished by, by a few missteps in, in a, a an ad or something that didn't come off. Right. Um, but the truth is, is nobody remembers mistakes like that because my results speak for themselves. And the, 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 the success rate that we have is so absurdly high for the industry. And the reason for that is because I say no. Yeah. If I have a client come on that I know for a fact I will get a result for, I, I say yes. Yeah. And I, I offer them the program because I know that when they come in, in a few weeks or, you know, a couple of months, I'm going to get a testimonial that is going to sell three, four, five or more 
clients in. So why, you know, I always view it that way is why would I take on somebody that is iffy or that I know they're going to be a pain or they're not going to get results. I wouldn't even offer the program because if I only take on people, I know I can get results for that becomes an asset to my business, which gets me even more people and it snowballs. And that's sort of the, the, the genesis, uh, the idea that I've, I, I've had this whole time. It's like, look, it's more profitable to say, no, I, I met a billionaire once. I did some work for him years ago named Jeff Brandon. And he said the most profitable word in the English language is no. And when you really understand that as an entrepreneur, it, yeah. it takes discipline, but it, it can help you greatly. How do you handle no's? Uh, in what context? So you, there is a client you want to work with. You believe and know you can add value. Um, at that point, they don't necessarily see the value. They tell you no. And I'm like you, I think a lot of, I think the most meaningful conversations, I'm not talking socially, mm -hmm. but the most meaningful conversations start with no. Uh, what are your thoughts on that? And have you handled a no before? Well, for me, we don't get a lot of no's, at least in that context. We get, I may not have the money, but we don't get, no, I don't see the value. Because the way we we take calls with clients, you you would never get on the phone with us if you didn't see the value. We yeah. we have a, a system I call core content that yeah. filters that out. So I personally, because I don't do cold calls, I don't do cold outreach. Yeah, you don't do that. outbound, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I'm all about inbound attraction yeah. marketing. So I don't really get a, no, I don't want your program or no, I don't see the value because that's just not how our client attraction, you know, that's not just not how our system works, yeah. but we do get like, you know, I'm not sure this is for me, or I'm not sure I would be able to take advantage of it, or I don't have the money. And when it comes to that, and this is a, a sales thing that most people don't understand when somebody gives you an objection, cause that's what that is. That's called an objection. Yes. 99.9% .9 of the time, the, the objection that someone says with their mouth is not the objection they're thinking. Yeah. I'll give you an example. Please. Let's say somebody says, well, I've taken programs like this before and I haven't got results. What makes you any different? Most people in that sales situation will go, well, this is why we're different. And they'll just start saying all the reasons they're great. That's the worst thing you can do. What you simply do, and, 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 and you do this in almost every objection, you ask for clarity. You say, well, let me ask you a question. You say you've taken programs in the past. What specifically did you not like about them? Yeah. Now they're going to tell you a reason. Correct. They're going to say, well, uh, I, you know, I never got time to answer my question because I'd get on the calls a few minutes late and we'd run out of time. So now that I hear that, now I personally know in our program, we have a policy. Everybody gets their question answers. We don't end the call unless everybody gets their questions. answered. I know that because I know my product. I know my program. So Correct. at that point, I would say, well, in our program, we have a policy and I would tell them that. Then I say, now it. it if you were guaranteed to always get your question answered, do you think that would help you a lot more than these other programs? And they go, yes, it would. I said, well, that's how our program is different. And so that way I address their actual objection. Oh, now, if they say, well, I want to be able to have, you know, the owners, the, 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 his phone number and his email and call him any time at night, then we would say, well, we ain't going to do that. Have a nice day and hang up. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, that, because we don't, I, I, I wouldn't, Give I that you could pay me ten million dollars I wouldn't do that yeah. so um, you know my family time is my family time and nobody's going to interrupt that so again it's not just selling it's yeah. understanding if it's a good fit and you you can't do that if you're talking you have to listen you have to ask for clarification you know and if somebody says to you well I just I, I think it's over you know I I think it's too much money you don't get offended and start saying why it's not too much money. You say, well, are you saying that you don't think it's worth it and you won't get your money back? Or are you saying you don't have the money? Two completely Big different difference. paths. Big difference. Right. And yeah. then when they say, when they clarify, then you go down that path. So the biggest way I handle a no or an objection is asking for clarification because very rarely will somebody say an objection that is the actual objection. Agreed. And we know that value has to exceed the cost in order for them to act. Before we conclude, I just have one last question. Uh, we, we had a, a client situation where um, troubled client, you know, they, they, they're, they're the least spending client and usually the most difficult, right? Um, and I told my team, I said, what makes me the most nervous about this is I hate it when we have to work for money. Right. And I think you kind of get that. Mm -hmm. So what I'm getting at is with COVID, with restrictions, with truncated revenue, 
what recommendations do you have for somebody who has to deal with some stuff right now, eat a little croak, what's going on, and have to work for money, but what's your recommend, recommendation on how to get out of that quickly so you can maybe dismiss that client or realign? Um, well, I could give you an answer, but I, I, I would like to ask for a specific example to give you a better answer. Are you, are you able to give me a specific example? Yeah, so I have an example of a client that we took on as a retainer. We're very, we're like you, we have our transactional side, which we have media stuff, buy and sell, and then we have a retainer clients. And we're super, super picky like you on retainer clients. We took a retainer client on a, on a little bit of the lower end than we normally do. Um, we kind of need the revenue because we're working on a new project. So we need the money, really not for profit, not for, you know, buying a Bentley, but to, to feed our new venture, which is, you know, kind of at a deficit, but growing. And we took on this client, very difficult. And we kind of need the money, but it's like, wait a second, like it's taking a lot of time and it's like devaluing us a little bit. And, but kind of need the money still. Like I'm a little older, I'm not old, but I'm older. You got three kids. I got a lot of responsibilities. I don't pulse. Like, I don't like, I didn't lay people off during the um, COVID situation. I didn't, you know, play games. I run at losses, even though I could have laid people off and they could have even got more money. I'm very, I think employees are number one, not the customer. Because employers are number one. They'll treat the customer number one. So I just hate working for money and I hate when my team has to. So I want advice for people like me or people listening like, Jesus Christ, Tom, I'm working for money too. How do I get out of it and be closer to a Dan Henry model? Okay, so you're not going to like my answer at all. Go for, you're going to hate it. Uh, right. uh, so I'm going to answer it in two ways. Number one, the best thing you can do in a situation like that is realign expectations. So okay. like say, listen, here's the – because ultimately you want to sever the relationship yeah. because you can easily sell somebody new for more money that's not a pain. But you can sometimes just say, listen, here's the deal. Um this is the new set of expectations. If we want to move forward, here are the expectations. Yeah. Here's the price. And if you don't want to move forward, that's totally fine. Yeah. Just let me know. And then either you exit the relationship or you realign the expectations and you're good. However, on a deeper level, yeah. and this is the part you're not going to like, yeah. honestly, um, and I say this to everybody, not yeah. because it makes me popular, because it's the truth. Yeah. You haven't made millions with one business and it, things aren't delegated. Things aren't proper. You have no business creating a second business. So if you are making decisions that are less than ideal and break your principles in one business to fund another business, you probably shouldn't have that other business. And that's good the point. truth. That's a good point. Wow. I love it. See, that's why we have Dan Henry on. Dan, how can we find you? Uh, you can check out the Dan Henry show and I got a few extra minutes, uh, if you, okay. if, yeah, you if you want, but you can please. check out the Dan Henry show. It's on, you know, Apple iTunes and all that. Uh, you can get, grab a copy of my book, digital millionaire secrets at digital millionaire But honestly, where I have all of that sort of in one place is our main website, getclients.com. We have an awesome blog with some free stuff, the podcast, the book, we have a free webinar training, a lot of cool stuff on getclients.com. That's like the central hub where you can check out my stuff. Um, and, and yeah, so that, that's how to, all right. So we, we, got, we, got, all that. we got the wrap up, but we're going to do some additional bonus content. Sure. They say, so, so I'd love to hear your strategy, not advice, your strategy. You got the book. Now I know what it takes. I, I do bestseller campaigns. So I know what it takes to get on WSJ USA today. That's not easy. That's actually even arguably harder than New York Times. So I know what it takes to get there. So you sold a lot of units. Um, in terms of the podcast, I know podcasting is a labor of love. What is your strategy? Is it, are these profit centers for you? Attraction tools? More of a hobby? Because you love doing it to get the message out. I want to hear those two products and where do they fit into the get clients strategy? That's a great question. I'll be happy to go over it. So this is what yeah. I call the core content system. Yeah. This is what we teach all of our clients. I don't care what you sell. Yeah. Uh, this is what we teach. So what I do is very different than a lot of people. I create one core piece of content. And generally, you could call that a webinar or a VSL, a case study, perhaps a book. Um, my webinar and my book have a lot of similar information. So I yeah. sort of count those as one. But essentially, it's one piece of content that once your customer, whether that comes from Facebook ads or what, whatever, 
when they watch or consume that content, it fully qualifies them, right? Yeah, okay. And there's either, they, they come out of that content in one of three situations. For, and, and the goal is to get them to book a call to speak with us. And I get it. A lot of people like to sell stuff over an order page. Let me just tell you, switching to a phone call, it may seem like it's more work. It ain't. It's far less work and it's easier to move things. Like if you want to raise your prices in a funnel, it's like a two week process. Yeah. You want to raise your prices over the phone. You just say 10 instead of five, right? It's it. It's it. So it's a much easier business to run, even though you add that one, you're taking like five things away that you don't want to deal with just and add one thing you don't want to deal with. So you still, anyway, I digress. The point is this, when they're done with the content, there's only one of three options. Yes, this is amazing. This relates to me. I'm the person that this person is looking for and, and, and vice versa. It fully qualifies them and they book a call. Okay. And they're a highly qualified prospect immediately. Or it filters them out and they say, no, that doesn't resonate with me. I'm not that person. And so they don't book a call and probably they unsubscribe from your list, whatever. Or the third one, which is the majority, they are a maybe. They resonate, but they're not quite there to book a call. Now, what I do, yeah. okay. right, what I do is I don't create YouTube videos and podcasts and all that to get new clients. I focus on, you know, we spend money on Facebook ads, YouTube ads, paid media. And what we do is every podcast episode, every YouTube, or at least almost every one, is some sort of answer to an objection that would get them to book a call. And so right. we drip out email after email after email of value, of, of client results, of tutorials, but it's all framed around getting them to book a call. And so what happens is, you know, I can spend a measly hundred grand a month on Facebook ads and do 800,000, sometimes over a million a month because we have that core content system so dialed in that, you know, even if they don't book a call right away, they're constantly getting objections overcome in this drip sequence. Yeah. And yes, some of that content when we release it on podcasts and on YouTube will attract, and this is the great part about it, will at the same time attract new prospects, which will go to the top of the funnel, which is that core content, enter there and then continue the drip. So it's sort of, you know, when people spend money on Facebook ads or YouTube ads, they get nervous because the value of a lead is so important. Whereas for me, it doesn't matter if I have a $5 lead or a $30 lead. It's irrelevant it's because we charge a five-figure investment for our program. Correct. We have it so dialed in that there's so many different ways and it all comes back to booking a call. Most people are like, well, I'm going to sell them this. I'm going to sell them that. I'm going to sell them this mini course. Blah, blah, blah. Everything revolves around book a call, book a call. I always say book and close, book yeah. and close. Yeah. And so, you know, that's what we help set up for our clients. But as well, we teach them the art of creating good core content, creating good follow-up content and selling over the phone. To be quite honest with you, most of our clients, we get them to book calls and close sales without even needing a fancy sequence right in the beginning. Um, you know, I have a weight loss coach She's doing like 50 grand a month. She doesn't even have a funnel. But when you want to scale that and you want to organize everything and have everything great, then you build out this core content system with all this drip stuff. And now you really, that's, that's when you start doing multiple six figures and seven figures a, a, a month. So we just help our clients pretty much do what we've done and refined over the past several years. Um, and, and that in a nutshell is the system. So, so there, there, I mean, this is, this is gold. So, so one thing I, I'm pulling from this is people tend to have their earned media and their own media and their paid media and kind of have them in separate buckets, separate channels. What you're doing is you're creating your own media and saying, great, whoever finds it on iTunes, great, whoever finds it, whatever, yeah, I don't great, care, yeah. <laughs> but I'll also use it as paid media to attract you and not, it's a little deeper than content marketing. You're not content marketing. You're actually doing content marketing, funnel marketing, media at the same time. So when the person absorbs this, you're right. They can follow one, three one of three channels organically. So by the time that phone rings, yeah, it's a, it's a matter so, of Visa or MasterCard. Right. So I call it reverse organic 
Because yeah. think about this. Let's say you're spending money on ads, right? Yeah. And, or you're spending money on influencer marketing. Yeah. Or it doesn't matter. The point is you're spending money on that. So Correct. why not get the most for your money? Why sit there and go, all right, well, I'm going to focus on Facebook ads and YouTube ads, but then I'm going to go over here and focus on making a blog or a YouTube channel that attracts new customers when you can just focus on, you know, the way I do it is I create content that speaks to the people that already came into my world. So it increases the lifetime value of that customer. It yeah. makes that customer more valuable. And it's still content that other people may find like, and then go into the top of the funnel, go into that initial first piece of core content. I don't sit there and go, what new content am I going to create to bring new customers? I'm going to say, what are the people that I've already paid for want to hear that'll get them off the fence? And so, you know, and that's not to say that every time, every once in a while, I don't mess around and try to put a, a new YouTube video out that, that may blow my channel up or, but, but then again, I also have years of content and I have the best of the best that I can put into a drip sequence. So at this point I can kind of mess around and see if I can do all that, but you don't need to do that in the beginning. I mean, look, I'm going to be honest with you. If you, and I don't mean this to be a, a jerk, but I know a lot of people that do multiple six figures a month and have for a while, and they don't have the lifestyle that they want because they're spending most of their money on all these different ways to acquire clients and their profits are down. Um, I remember years ago, I hit a million dollars in sales and I got that little, you know, gold to comma club award from uh, ClickFunnels. Well, about 40 days after that, I posted a screenshot of a million, a cool million in my bank. And I said, listen, guys, I said, it's one thing to earn this two comma club award. It's another to have a million in the bank. Correct. And I've, I've been able to, in the past four years, I've been able to uh, lean out my business where I've increased the profit margin so dramatically above industry average that I've been able, I've been able to create a seven figure investment portfolio. Uh, I started a, a, a yacht business where I bought a $2 million yacht. Yeah. I read that. Charter yeah. it out. Yep. Um, I own multiple pieces of personal real estate. Uh, I'm heavy into stocks, crypto, just all kinds of stuff with all, you know, and I talked to my CPA and she says, you know, Dan, I work with a lot of people in your industry and you're like stupid profitable compared to most. And I, I always attribute that to the fact that I'm not out there trying to do a million things. I'm trying to do one thing good and maximize it to the hilt. Not let me spend all this money on a YouTube channel and try to grow that. And let me spend all this money on a podcast. And let me, I don't even take guests on my podcast. I mean, I do every once in a while um, if I think it's something that my audience would like, but for the most part, I just say, Hey, are you guys dealing with this issue? Here's how you get over it. And yeah. by the way, if you need help, book a call with my team, go to getclients.com and book a call. And, and these are people, the majority of them already watch my core content. They're already on the fence. So that podcast episode, and if you go to our website, you notice there's a podcast episode. And then right underneath that, it says, Hey, did you enjoy this episode? If you need help apply to become a client. So everything always revolves around booking a call okay. and, and, and applying. I have, I have some questions. I very, I very, it's going funny. So Dan and I, before the call, we're like, we keep it organic, blah, blah, blah. And I'm sitting here and I'm writing notes, which I never do. <laughs> so I got three questions before we conclude. I very, I don't, in 300 podcasts, I, I might've took notes three times. All right. Number one, where do you stand on the good, better, better, good, better, best menu pricing model? I, I don't even know what that means. Can so you good, better, that? best is C class, S class, E class, and then maybe supers Maybach. Do you just want to sell Maybach and S classes or do you have a C class offering to get them along their journey? So when they can afford S class, they'll buy it from you. No, 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 no. Okay. That's a huge misconception in this okay. industry. The idea that you need to sell somebody something low ticket to get them to buy high ticket is, is a falsehood perpetuated by info product marketers that have been around for years. That's just not true. Yeah. The truth is you have a low ticket market and you have a high ticket market. Yeah. Now pay very close attention because this is huge. Yeah. Low ticket people think and behave in a certain way and high ticket people do. Now, yeah. low ticket people need a lot of convincing. They only buy products that are a few hundred dollars or a few thousand dollars, right? 
Then you have high ticket people that bought that they say, you know what, screw all this. I want the best. I want the best. I want to know that I'm going to get a result and I'm willing to pay for it. And those are the people who pay five, 10, 50. Like I'll give you an example. My mastermind is $55,000 per year. I sell, you know, when it's, when it's open, I sell sometimes two to three of those a week. Wow. And the thing is, is, is you might think, oh, well, Dan, they probably bought your, your other program. And then they said, no, I'd say about 70% of them bought that as a first purchase. And that proves that some people just want their problem solved to the absolute best. And like, that's why you have people that will go into a buy here, pay here car lot. And they will argue for two hours over a $1,500 car. People yeah. that go into a Ferrari dealership, they pick out the Ferrari they want, they buy it, and they drive off, period. And, or wait. And so what, or wait. <laughs> right. And so what happens is most of the education out there teaches you to talk to and sell to a low ticket market. And yes, you could sell somebody low ticket. And over the course of several months or even years, you could get them to ascend to high ticket. Sure. But- the high ticket market exists. It's they're ready to buy high ticket as a first purchase now, but nobody teaches you how to talk to them. No, there's hardly any education out there on how to speak to high ticket people versus low ticket people. The truth is high ticket people require a completely different approach. They appreciate different things and they're easier to sell to. So what we do as a company is we teach our clients how to talk high ticket people, not low ticket people so that you can sell high ticket from the beginning as your only product. The truth is if you haven't made at least a couple million with your business or your offer high ticket, you ain't got no business creating a low ticket offer. You can totally sell at high ticket from the very beginning. Now yeah. you might say, well, Dan, you have a book that's 10 bucks. And well, sure I do. I will say this. Number one, I've made, I made $10 million before I ever wrote that book. Number two, that book, books are the one exception. The one low, because high ticket buyers do not buy low ticket products. I will not buy a low ticket product. I don't got time to go through a low ticket product. Yeah. I want to buy consulting. I want to buy a master, an event, a mastermind. I want to buy something that's going to solve my problem completely. The one exception is books because smart people read books. Yeah. You will not find a Steve Jobs or an Elon Musk or any of those people that haven't read a ton of books. So that's the one exception to high ticket buyers is they will buy books. But these little mini course and stuff, high ticket people, they don't want that crap. So by you offering a $997 or a $200 or a $97 product, you're just turning off high ticket buyers. You're just pushing them away. And then you're, and then you're, you're basically, you're ba when you sell somebody something low ticket and try to get them to buy high ticket, you're basically engaging in a multi-month therapy session to get them comfortable with the fact that they should spend that amount of money that they should have spent in the first place to get away. Anyway. Whereas you ain't got to do that with high ticket buyers. And the first yeah. thing to do to learn how to attract high ticket buyers is to become a high ticket buyer yourself. Yourself, correct. Because there's no way you can sell high ticket if you're not willing to invest high ticket. That, that's called being a hypocrite. There'd be too Agreed. much internal conflict. You won't be able to do it. So I Agreed. hope that that answered your question. All right. Got a few more before we conclude. Okay. So I want it as the entirety, not the recent, not the, from all the way to college general, all the way to the local micro, where do you stand on influencer marketing right now? And do you invest in it? Uh, it just depends on the situation. So in my industry, I, I don't do a lot of influencer marketing just because most of the influencers in my space sell their own stuff. There's just, Got there's it. just not a lot of opportunity there. I do, however, have I just released my first e-commerce product? It's a, uh, a a daily planner, and it's it's I like basically I made my own planner to stay productive over the past several years. It works so well. We made it a product, and we've begun selling it on like a Shopify store. We're probably gonna put it on Amazon soon, and so that that product is a uh, you know a very special type of product. It's a probably the highest quality planner you've ever held in your hands. And it's been doing very well just with my list. Um, uh, but uh, I have considered doing something where I either pay an influencer in the productivity planner niche to, to promote it or even giving them like a link where they get a 20% oh, like yeah, percentage or whatever. By the way, if you want one, I'd be happy to send you one. Be happy to. Um, be happy to. Let's, let's, let's share it. 
I have two more questions before we conclude. If you have anything in your internet, you'd be great as well. So you may not want to answer this, but I'm going to ask anyway. What are some of the tools that you use, top three tools that you use behind the scenes? Behind the scenes? Yeah. Um, that's so... Um, uh, top three tools I use behind the scenes. That's a great question. You mean things that you don't see on my front end? Yeah. So what, what are some of the tools? Are you, uh, like, you mentioned click funnels. Um, well that that's front end. That's just for landing pages. Um, well, let's go, let's go back in like some of the back end stuff, some of the big boy and girl stuff that you use, uh, maybe give a shout out. Stuff. So maybe, I have a, maybe, maybe, I, on, maybe they give you a discount or, or, or free freebie if you mention them. Okay. So, I have a, I'll tell you what my, my, my best one is. Um, and I have a link with a tutorial video okay. that I can send you. Let me just make sure I got the right link. Yeah. But basically one of the, one of the, the biggest problems is knowing where your ads and your efforts are coming from, like being able to properly track. And yeah, attribution, the, attribution, of course. The attribution. That, is, that was such an issue in my uh in my company that you know we really really had we really really had a a a tough time with that because if you don't know where your sales are coming from it's so hard to scale yeah. uh we i ended up um speaking with a friend of mine who's another big influencer and and we talked about it years ago and he ended up creating a software and uh uh I've been using it since, since the beginning and it's just changed the game. I, I, I just, I can't imagine you not using it. Um, I'd be happy to give you, I have a little tutorial video on how I actually use the software. I'd be happy to give it to your audience for free, yeah. but I don't talk yeah. about it too much. Cause it's sort of like my secret weapon. Um, yeah, I was going to say, that's why I asked. I was wondering. Well, if I, if you want, I can give you a link. Um, yeah. I'll just make, I can make it active right now. It's uh, get clients dot com slash secret and it okay. is a tutorial video uh on how i use this software to track my attribution uh it, it's so this whole like for instance this whole facebook ios thing that's been happening i'm sure you've heard about it yeah. where everybody's freaking out that doesn't affect me in the slightest because i i haven't used facebook or youtube tracking or attribution for well over a year because I don't need to, because I use a completely different thing. And it's not, you know, I used to try like wicked reports and all these yeah. other softwares could never get them set up like ever. Are we, was, I mean, on our end, we keep it simple. We use like dynamic numbers or bitlies and all that kind of crap. But, but I know what you're saying. You want a deeper understanding of your attribution. So in order to, to have that, yeah. How can you scale? So that makes perfect sense. Yeah. So I'm, um, yeah, here, I just made the link active. Um, yeah, Perfect. so if you go to getclients.com slash secret, I have a tutorial video and I literally show exactly how I use the software for attribution. And if it seems like something that you're interested in, you can check it out. But honestly, it's not, um, you gotta be spending a little bit of money uh, to, to to make it worth it. But man, yeah. I, I, I would not, um, yeah. I would not absolutely would not uh, be able to scale without it for I sure. It. Last question I have, and, and, and we linked, um, I'm happy that we linked. So one of the things, you know, is earned media and I'd be interested in having your, your answer, depending how you are with the, with your progress, your business startup, six figures, seven figures, where do you stand on having and retaining PR? Is it something you think you should just create a whole shit ton of media Get it out there. You don't need an agent these days. You know, know what? I want to do what I do best. Let an agent do that for me. I want to know where you stand in terms of having PR representation and do you invest in it personally? So I have recently, um, but one of the reasons I, I didn't in the past was because I couldn't track it. Now I can because yeah. I have yeah. that software, but there we go. Um, so now when I do PR, I can specifically track it and I can know, okay, well, is it worth it or not? I'm going to be, I'm going to give you the real answer. Yeah. Do I think you need PR to, to grow from the beginning? No, I think, um, you know, I grew through paid media and things like that. Uh, and so my personal approach is no, now that I have a lot of money to play with, I have messed with it. Yeah. I, and I do have, um, 
people that I work with are very good. They got me verified on Instagram and Facebook. Um, and so that's nice because it lowers your ad costs when you're verified. It looks good. So, you know, now that I have the company that I have, I don't mind spending money on things that will improve my business and yeah. polish it. But if you're just getting started, I think it would really depend on what your product was. Yeah. Um, because it's like you have a make money online course on making money, probably not. But if you have like a really cool, unique product, like a physical product, that's just so cool. Like, I don't know, like you remember when they had those, uh, those scraper things that w when they were brand new, where you could easily, you could like defrost a windshield yes. in like 10 seconds, yes. you know, maybe PR would do great for that. I'm probably not the best person to ask about it. Cause that's not how I grew my company. Um, but I think that, uh, it really just depends on what your offer is and what you're trying to do. But no, I personally don't make that a huge pillar. Got it. It makes perfect sense. So Dan, I always was, say, look, yeah, if you do something worth talking about, people will talk about it. That's don't, true. you know, don't pay for people to talk about it. Agree. Agree. It's gotta be organic. So Dan, so one last get get it, get emails .com and just give you social no, get, handles. No, no, we, no, 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 please no. I mean, get, get, get clients. clients .com. <laughs> I don't even know what that other website is. Get clients .com. We'll put a link below. Dan, I'll share some links. We'll share it um, with you guys. Uh, Dan, I had high expectations of this call. You exceeded those expectations. You gave us a little extra time, folks. So make sure you listen to this point. And uh, check Dan out. And definitely, if you're in the space, reach out to him uh, for consulting and uh, tell him new theory. Thank you. Dan, thank you so much. Hey, thanks, Ben. I enjoyed coming on.